Hello. All right, let me just check. So, so that you know the order of things today, we'll do some movement. I'll show you some ways to, well, wake the whole body up. It's a good way to start the day. It's a good way to, well, wake yourself up if you feel sleepy during the day. Um, and then I will also say some things about my morning routine, how I make sure that I feel good right when I wake up so that I can start my day. Uh, so we'll talk about joint lubrication, which is very important so that you know some drills to do during the day um, when you feel a bit sleepy, a bit sluggish. We'll talk about some easy sun salutations then uh, Agni Sara, which is a digestive technique you can also use and uh, things like oil pulling, tongue scraping, nasal oil, neti pots, al kal palabati and some breathing techniques. So we have a lot of, to talk about. Um, the idea is that in this class every week uh, you can also suggest anything that you'd like to know. That's why yesterday I asked on Instagram if people had anything they wanted to work on specifically. Um, but from what I gather, everyone just wants to feel a bit more grounded, a bit more in control, a bit more security. So these drills will help you to revitalize the body when you feel a bit dormant, a bit sluggish, and to find that hope again these days that we feel a bit hopeless. <laughs> All right, so we'll start right away with some joint replication. So we'll stand up. I'll just close the windows for now so you can see me clearly and then I can open them again. So this is something that you can do whenever you're, well, you've been in bed for too long or you've been on the chair for too long. It's some simple tricks to just lubricate all the joints. So it's different uh, movements that can be a bit intuitive so you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing but it's suggestions so that whenever you need to... All right, you can still see me, right? Okay. So wrists together, you press the palms together and you start rolling the wrists around. Make sure you're breathing. Relax the muscles of the face and then go the other way. So you can do circular movements, you can also move to the figure 8, the figure of infinity. Very well. Then we move to the elbows, so you start moving the elbows around, exploring the range of motion of the elbows. So you can bring the hands in and out, and then the other way again, there's no rules can be a bit intuitive and then we move to the shoulders. So move the shoulders around to the front, up, back and down and then go the other way. And then shoulders up, one shoulder forward, the other back. So go with this opposite <coughs> motions of the shoulders and then the other way. Hello everyone who's just checking in. We're just learning how to wake the body up. So we started with some wrist stretches, some elbow movements, and then the shoulders. So now we'll move the arms around, just like swimming. So go one way, and then go the other way. Don't be afraid to move the chest around, to really explore the range of motion of the shoulders, then bring the arms up reach up through the arms and then one arm forward the other back so work with your coordination the first time you try this it might seem impossible it just takes some time to get used to arms up and then go the other way so opposite arm back and arm up all right so we go to the head so rolling the head around And the other way, relax the muscles of the face. So this is again just to lubricate all the joints. Now we're working with the cervical spine. Bring the head up, so look up straight 
and then move the head forward to the right back and to the left so face looking forward and you're just exploring the cervical spine it's called cervical vortex so moving the head around and then go the other way so try to face forward the whole time face forward and just go around with the head then follow with the chest start moving the chest to the front to the side to the back uh, just for a second, guys, Anastasia, can you mute, please? Because there's a bit of background noise from, from you guys. Yeah. And we can't hear Alex. Thank you. So in, uh, yeah, in, in Zoom, make sure that at the bottom, there's a button that is uh, about the voice. So make sure you mute yourselves so that you cannot, uh, yeah, you don't distort the sound. Okay, and then to the pelvis. So start moving the pelvis around. One way, and then the other way. Beautiful. Okay, so stand up straight. Pelvic tilts. So turn the pubic bone forward, and then the butt, stick the butt back. So pelvic floor forward, and back. Pubic bone forward, and then tailbone back. And then see if you can follow that with some body rolls. If that doesn't happen today, again, it takes some time to get used to. And then see if you can go the other way. Amazing. All right, then bring your hands to the thigh. So come back so you can see me. I'll bring the camera a bit down. And then you start rolling the knees around. So knees bent, feet hip distance apart, and just move the knees around. You can work with the distance between the feet. Maybe you're more comfortable doing it with the feet together, maybe with the feet apart. All right. So make sure you do it both ways, then stand up, pick up the chest, straighten the leg, point the foot, and then flex the foot. Point the foot, and then flex the foot, and then point and move the ankle around. So roll the foot around, you don't need to have the leg up, you can have just the foot uh, 10 centimeters off the ground. Go one way and then make sure you go the other way. And then bend the knee, bring the knee up, move the hip around, so explore the hip movement. Knee out, knee down, knee in, and then the other way. If you want to, you can also straighten the leg and explore the movement that way and then the other. Then moving to the other foot, pick up the foot, point and flex, point and flex, point and then turn the ankle around, keeping the foot engaged. And then roll it the other way. Amazing. Okay, bend the knee and roll the hip around. Knee out, knee down, knee in, and then the other way. All right. You can also straighten the leg just to see the range of motion with the leg straight. Good. Okay, then you can kind of shake it off maybe jump a bit up and down, and then stand with the feet hip distance apart and just twist around, allow the arms to just direct the movement. Head follows the movement, you can look beyond your peripheral vision as you twist around. And then slowly come to stop. So this um, drill, this whole thing, it can take just one minute, just two minutes. So very quickly, you can stand up and start with the wrist, then the elbows, then the shoulders, a bit of the arms, move the head around. Of course, I mean, if you've been sitting for a while, then uh, take it easy. Don't just like throw yourself out because it might feel uncomfortable. So explore the, the joint movements. 
so that you make sure that you don't lose the mobility of the joints. So this was just um, a, wild, a wide explanation of what you're supposed to do. But again, just be intuitive and during the day, like now, that you wanted to get some movement, you just make sure that all the joints in the body, they get to move and you get to explore that range of motion. Okay, now I will talk a bit about some different rituals that you can do in order to start the day. Um, and I'll explain how I start my day and I will be showing what's happening and also we'll get to do some more physical exercises. So make yourself comfortable. So um, right when you wake up with your stomach empty, a good exercise to start the day with is Agnisara, so that's stomach isolations. So again, this will not look the way that it looks with me because I've been practicing it for a while, but what you want is to pull the lower belly in and then suck everything up. So you create a vacuum here and then you relax. So we're exhaling all the air out first thing in the morning pulling everything in and up, holding the breath out as we're doing it, and then comfortably relaxing to inhale into the belly. There's different um, stages to this exercise. I'll show the exercise progressively, but as I said, this is a great exercise to do first thing in the morning. Yogis are meant to do it first thing in the morning. Uh, it's called Agni Sara. Agni is the fire, the digestive fire. And it's a great way to uh, make sure that your whole digestive system resets first thing in the morning. So what you do is you wake up. You can drink a glass of water because you're dehydrated after sleeping. And then you go to the toilet you do what you have to do with the toilet and then you, you're still in the bathroom, you sit in a squat, you bring your hands to the thighs. So if you want to try it with me, bring the feet wide apart, so shoulder distance apart, press the feet down, inhale and then exhale round the back, exhale through the mouth, let all the air out, press down into the heels, Pull the lower belly in and suck everything up. Before inhaling, make sure you relax and then inhale. So what happens is that it's as if you're inhaling without inhaling. So you're exhaling all the air out. And then you imagine that you're inhaling without inhaling to suck everything up. Then you relax and then you inhale. So let's try it for five times. Press the feet down, exhale all the air out. Relax the face, but keep squeezing your butt. Squeeze your pelvic floor, lift everything up. Pull lower belly in, make sure all the air is out and keep sucking everything in and up. Then relax the pelvic floor and inhale. All right, exhale, press heels down, let all the air out, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your anal sphincter, squeeze everything up, pull your belly in and up, suck it all in. Relax and inhale. Okay, two more. Again, if nothing happens, if nothing pulls up, just that engagement, that's important. You're still... And, um, activating your digestive system. So exhale all the air out, round your back, press the heels down, sag everything up, squeeze everything in and up, then relax and then inhale. And one last time, again, you can lift your shirt to make sure something is happening or to have that intention, all the air out. And again, remember to first relax, and then your inhale, uh, you inhale. First times you do it, it might cause some coughing, 
you might feel uncomfortable. It's not the coronavirus, it's just new. So take it easy and stage by stage, you'll be able to suck it up. So the next stage, and you want to visualize it, it's actually Nauli. So what happens with Nauli is that you're massaging your belly. So it starts with this isolation here. I don't know how far you can see, I'll come really close. So you suck everything in. And then you pull the belly in and up and you start isolating the right side and then you move the, the, the belly around. So I'll try it, hopefully, yeah, I can see that it's quite dark. I'll see if this helps. No, it doesn't. All right, I'll try again so that you see. <sighs> All right, so pretty much what you want with time is to exhale the breath out and think of the right part of the abdomen moving forward, then the middle and then the side, and you massage your belly in that way. It helps to move the hips around a bit, but again, start with the stomach isolations, and then think of a massage of the body, and eventually it will happen. Now you couldn't even see it clearly, but we can come back to it next week for the yogi rituals. Hey, can we ask you questions? You can, you can. This is an interactive ritual session, so let me know what's the question. So, for the first one that you showed us, uh, is it uh, wrong or just right for the first time that it feels like I'm just putting a lot of tension here when I try to, like, exhale and suck everything up? It feels like I'm doing it from my throat, not from my... Belly. Yeah, so the throat, you're, you're supposed to exhale the breath out, bring the chin in, and the first time that you do it, you will feel a restriction here, because this is uh, Jahalandara Banda, it's the throat lock, so uh, you will feel like it's something new, it, at least that was my experience, so it will go with time. So just think of the shoulder blades coming down so that there's no real muscular engagement. You're not bringing the shoulders up and uh, squeezing into the throat. So pulling the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, but you suck the belly in and up and you focus on pulling everything up and with time that that tension will go away. So I, I, I think it's, it's normal, but I can look into it and I can let you know if like what exactly you're doing wrong. But I was also straining the throat at, at first. Also, it's the idea of holding the breath out, which makes us asphyxiate, because we're more used to holding the breath in. So inhaling and holding the breath and exhaling and not holding the breath. But now we have to exhale and hold all the breath in. So it feels like a lot of, um, well, something new. The, your body asks you to, to breathe. So try it, and if it's still happening after a week or two, then we can see what exactly the problem is. Okay, so you wake right. up. and then you answered my second question. Yes. Just a second, you answered my second question as well, which uh, you said that shoulders should be like down, not squeezed. Yeah, shoulders and the back back, is shoulder bit... blades down, so that you're... And the back is like... Pulling down, the belly not... in. You're pressing the feet down, pulling the belly in and up and sucking everything up. You think of the six bones moving away, but because you're sucking everything up, you will have sort of a, a round body action, which is why you want to roll the shoulders back just so that you're not straining the neck. So just moving the shoulders away, pulling everything up, in and up, and then relaxing and inhaling. So this is energetically, um, Agnisara is meant to pull all the energy up and you want to hold the Chahaladaram Banda, then, then throat lock, so that all the energy basically uh, remains here at the heart and you're working with this area to wake up the body um, and to basically get the energy flowing. So something interesting, energetically, well, physiologically, all of the heart openers, are um, 
activating your sympathetic nervous system. So something that you need to know is that if during the day you feel uh, calm, well, basically lazy and sluggish, opening up, it wakes your, up your body. So working with this part of the body, it vitalizes you. So it's a good thing to do in the mornings. That's why I will also talk about some sun salutations in a second. Uh, but then working with the lower back and the neck, so folding forward and extending these parts of the body, that's, uh, that activates your parasympathetic nervous system. So whenever you feel agitated, like it's all getting too much, if there's too much work, if you feel too stressed, then this is a nice thing to do. Just fold forward and breathe into the belly because breathing into the belly will also expand your lower back and at the lower back and at the back of the neck there's the nerves that, that activate the, your parasympathetic nervous system so if it all gets too much just crawl into a ball and breathe into your belly all right so as i said when you wait when i wake up what i do is i have some water i go to the toilet and then i do my acne sara my nauli so the the massage of the belly Next thing I do is um, I do my tank scraping. So I have my tank scraper here. So in Ayurveda, which is the Indian medicine, they believe that uh, a lot of bacteria collects on the tank. And just like brushing your teeth, you should also scrape your tank. So this is a, a tank scraper. It's basically a copper um thin curvy thing <laughs> and what you have to do is stick your tongue out it just takes two seconds i'll show it so you stick your tongue out you widen your tongue as fast as possible and you just scrape down gently at first because your tongue might not be used to getting scraped but with time uh, it's just like a firm like particularly articulate movement. So you press down and you scrape out everything. So it looks like this. Okay, so you do one side quite slowly. You wash it. I have a towel here. So I'll just, and then you do the other side of the tongue. So this just costs like four euros, five euros, because it's just a piece of metal. Um, I just found mine on Amazon and while there's still Amazon happening, you can just order one and you'll get yours from your country because all the borders are closed. All right, so I do my tank scraping. Then I have some, well, I have my B12 because I'm vegan, so I get my vitamins and I have some aloe vera. So aloe vera, you can find uh, organic aloe vera everywhere in any organic shop. It will be tasteless or very, um, well, with a very intense taste for you, depending on your constitution. Uh, like when my mother tried it for the first time, she found it very repulsive. Uh, for me, it was more tasteless. In Ayurveda, so in the Indian medicine, they say that there's six different tastes, not just four. So aloe vera is actually, it has one of those six that we do not recognize. So it's not salty, it's not um, sweet, it's not sour, it's not um, like the, the other one that the um, uh, pies have. It's not the other one that they talk about is the pakman, so the spicy one, and the other one is what Ayurveda has. So it comes with a cup, 30 ml a day is ideal for everyone because we don't have any sources of this taste. And in Ayurveda, they say that we need to get a bit of everything. Aloe vera is like the drink of the gods for medicine in, uh, in India. Uh, it fixes everything, so you can Google it. I just wanted to mention that it is part of my daily ritual. 
Um, after tank scraping so that I clean my tank, that was a suggestion of Ro, another teacher. She said, okay, first clean your tank before digesting anything. And then um, I do my nasal oil and my oil pooling. So this is the last part where I, I talk and we don't do something active, but I think it's interesting. So I will talk about it because again, it's things that you do not hear about in the West, not even in yoga classes. And this is kind of, well, some of the most important practices in yoga. So we, we think of yoga today as all of these uh, physical acrobatics, but really yoga is the practice of keeping yourself healthy and happy. So Ayurveda, which is the Indian medicine, is a, as an integral part of yoga in order to stay healthy and to stay happy. So what I use uh, is sesame oil, organic sesame oil again. My Ayurvedic doctor, he says that I should buy organic for like anything. So sesame oil is good for all constitutions. I can talk about constitutions another time. It's basically how they divide different types of people in India. So sesame oil, it can work for you. Also, coconut oil is, is good for most constitutions. The problem with coconut oil is that if you don't live in a country that's warm, it uh, solidifies. So then you have to warm it up. So I told my doctor the second time I saw him that it doesn't work for me because it's sticky and, it, and it's a lot of fuss. So if you're in Cyprus, then probably you can use coconut oil because it's warm um, and it will be a liquid. Otherwise, you can use sesame oil. So again, I'll bring a towel so that it, I don't get too messy. There's two parts. Nasal uh, oil. So um, it's also called um, uh, nasya and it helps to lubricate all of the nasal passages. For me, it's important because I have a lot of mucus that collects that gathers in my nasal pathways so a lot of the times one of my nostrils is actually blocked in ayurveda and in yoga they say that there's always a predominant um every night 90 minutes there's a predominant nostril but that doesn't mean that the other nostril should be blocked so this really helps me i do it in the mornings because when i wake up i do feel stuffed so if you feel stuffed, this will help you lubricate the nasal passages and it, it basically soothes and protects the nasal passages. It, it nourishes the tissues and um, the daily um, lubrication of the, of the nostrils, it helps release tension like in the head and anything that's accumulated. It helps like release any stress. Um, any tension you feel because i mean it makes sense if you feel intense in the head it gets it gets to be a headache and everything so it's very simple if you have uh, one of those things to put drops in your nose then you can use that i don't have that um comfort that luxury so all i do is i place um, I fill up the cup of the oil, of the oil bottle. So this is sesame oil, just normal sesame oil that you can put in your foot. I put some oil in the cup and then I bring my head back. I place some uh, oil in one nostril. I inhale it deeply, so three inhales. And then I go to the other and I do the same. So I'll, I'll do it now so you can actually see how I do it, but it's no uh, rocket science. So you just uh, pick up the head so that you have some access. You use the drop thing to add three drops in, in one nostril or you just use the cup like I do. So I inhale deeply. I make sure everything comes in, so it's like drinking from my nose. And then the other nostril. Okay, so it might look disgusting because we're not used to seeing something like that in the West, 
but it feels really good and I actually do feel quite relaxed now that I did it. It lubricates the passages of the nose and you feel fresh. So that's something I do every morning and then I do my oil pooling. So oil pooling, it's also known as uh, Kavala in, uh, in Ayurveda or something like Gundusha. So it's another Ayurvedic technique. It's meant to be the best thing for your dental hygiene. Um, and it basically involves like swishing a tablespoon of sesame oil or a, a, an oil that's good for your constitution. Sesame oil is good for everyone. That's why, um, I mean, go for it. It's supposed to be for like 10 to 20 minutes. But what I do is um, I, well, I take a mouthful of uh, sesame oil and then I have a shower while swishing my, my mouth just like with a, um, uh, like with dental solutions and gels. So this is just oil and it's natural. It draws the toxins out of the body and it's, it's, it improves oral health and overall health. People uh, swear by it. My Ayurvedic teacher in New York made it into a challenge for us to do it every day, um, like in the morning and at night for a month. And indeed, like you feel much better, you feel fresh. So I have some oil left in the cup. I just put it in my mouth. That's not enough, so I put a bit more you don't want too much. Okay, so you do that for five to 10 minutes. That's what I do. But you're supposed to do it even for 20 minutes. If you have any oral hygiene problems, it will make you feel good. It will pull out toxins from the body, use organic sesame oil or contact me and we can find out your constitutions and what works for you. So to sum up, I wake up, I do my, um, well, I drink some water because we are dehydrated during the night. I do my acne sara, what we did before, the tank scraping, the aloe vera with the, well, I have B12 and I drink uh, 30 ml of aloe vera and then I do my uh, tank scraping my nasal oil or my oil pull and my oil pulling so instead of nasal oil another thing that I was doing in the past was neti pot neti pot um, it's like a genie's bottle and you place warm water so lukewarm water in it not hot just slightly warm you add some salt some high himalayan salt and so it's like um, a salty solution and you inhale from well you don't really inhale you just tilt your head you place the neti pot at one nostril and the water just drips and it comes out of the other nostril the thing with me is that because my nose is usually blocked it didn't always work for me <laughs> so um for me nasal oil is works wonders and then I could also do my neti pot if I ever feel that I really need to clean up the nasal passages so with neti pot you do it one way and then the other you basically empty the bottle one way and then empty the bottle the other way it's not a lot of water in the bottle it's just a small genie bottle okay um, that's pretty much it with my morning routine so i have my shower while doing my oil pulling and then i speed everything out then things that you can do on the mat and during the day so after i do that i go to my mat and i do my practice so if you want to come to your mat i'll show you some um morning routines that you can do and also i'll explain how you can um integrate these routines during the day depending on what you need 
So a great thing to do in the morning is uh, Kapalabhati, the skull shining breaths. That's a cleansing exercise. So you want to sit up tall, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down. Reach the butt of the scalp up towards the sky, relax your eyebrows, relax your jaw. Extend your arms out, bring the thumbs and the index fingers together. Inhale into the lower belly, so fill your belly with air. Exhale, pull the lower belly back in. Keep sitting up tall, inhale into the lower belly, the front of the belly, the sides of the belly, the back of the belly. And exhale, keep sitting up straight, pull everything back in. Relax your eyebrows, relax your jaw. Inhale into the lower belly. And exhale everything back in. Okay, keep breathing in this way. This is called belly breathing. You relax your face and you keep breathing into your lower belly. This is a great way to connect with your diaphragmatic breathing. So the diaphragm, it's like a balloon, it's right there behind the ribcage. So as you inhale, you can visualize that balloon filling up with air and dropping down to the pelvic floor. And as you exhale, feel everything coming back in and lifting up. A lot of people, and maybe that's you, because I was also doing it, uh, we breathe paradoxically. So paradoxical breathing is when you breathe into the chest. Breathing into the chest and then breathing out. Now this is very important. This is life changing. If you're breathing into the chest, it's what happens is that is what we talked about before. You're actually um, activating your sympathetic nervous system. That's the fight or flight nervous system. That's you being ready for war, being ready to fight, being ready to run away from the wild beasts, being ready to go hunting and get your prey. So that's not a state of mind and a state of body of being you want to be in during the whole day. Unfortunately, how the word works is that they're taking advantage of our sympathetic nervous system because they want us to be alert the whole time so that we buy things and so that we believe that we need services and so that we basically are in that mode of fear and panic all the time so that we're easily controlled. It sounds extreme, but that's how interests work because if the government knows that you're its soldier, then everything is uh, predictable. If you're allowed to just relax and ground down, then you might realize that you have a calling and you actually want to bring some changes to the world. Okay, now with this kind of philosophical way of thinking, What's important to know is that if you're breathing into the chest the whole time, you're going to burn out because um, you'll always be in that mode of stress, of rushing to do things, and you'll never be calm. So social media, vi like your phone vibrates, there's all these alerts, there's all these like, ringtones and beeps, and there's all these sounds, there's all these triggers in the world. All these triggers, they activate your sympathetic nervous system. What we want is to have that sympathetic nervous system active for the time that we need to hunt, to be active, to do things. But then once we are done with our work and with being active, we want to be able to go back to our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the chill, relaxed state of mind. So this is how you start the day, sitting up tall and breathing into your belly. If at any point during the day you feel like it gets too much, just relax, sit up tall and breathe into your belly. Breathe low into the belly, feel the belly with air, and then breathe out. Kapalabhati breathing. So you start your day sitting up tall, take 
three to ten breaths into the belly and then Kapalabhati is just like blowing a candle. So we'll do one round through the mouth. Think of blowing a candle. So exhale forcefully through the mouth. And keep exhaling. Keep sitting up tall. And exhale all the air out of the mouth. Empty your belly. Focus on the belly. Breathe out. You can pick up the pace. One exhale per second. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Relax, inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth, let it go. Kapalabhati is known as the skull shining breath. It makes your skull shine. The first time you try it, it might again feel like too much. Make sure that you're sitting up and you're breathing. If it gets too much, come back to a steady breath, a belly breath. We'll do a second round through the nose. It's the same exercise, but we're exhaling out through the nose. Short, sharp, quick exhale breaths through the nose. So you're sitting up tall, you're focusing on the lower belly, and again, try to just move the lower belly. Maybe the chest will move, but with time you'll be able to limit the movement so that it's just in the belly. So inhale into the belly fully. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale a comfortable breath into the belly and begin the second round through the nose. Keep going. Keep sitting up tall. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, keep exhaling through the belly. Short, sharp, quick, exhale, breath. You don't think about the inhales, the inhales are automatic, keep exhale through the belly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, relax your face, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Exhale all the air out. Relax the belly, inhale. Inhale a deep breath from the pelvic floor all the way up to the crown of the head. And then open the mouth and exhale out. Kapalabhati breathing is a great cleansing exercise. If during the day things get too much, sit up tall and focus on the belly breathing and then do a round of, or two of 30 seconds of Kapalabhati. You can work towards like one minute, two minutes. But again, take it easy. If it's too agitating, take it slow. So you wake up, you do your morning routine in the bathroom. Maybe you don't do everything that I suggested, but you can start uh, integrating a practice or two and see how it benefits you. And then you come to your mat or just to sit down. You do some cleansing breaths and then you can do some sun salutations. Sun salutations are a great way to open up the body. What happens with sun salutations is a lot of extensions and flexions of the spine. So it's a great way to energize yourself. So we're opening up, energizing, uh, working with your sympathetic nervous system and then also flexing to really activate deep core muscles and strengthen your body. So I will show this Shivananda sun salutations. These are simple sun salutations. They are accessible to everyone. We will do uh, two rounds. The first round will be holding each movement so that I talk about each, each pose. And then the second round will do it fast. All of these rituals you can do really fast. They can all just take a minute or two, but they will change your life. So if you don't want to change your life, don't do them. But if you want to improve your life, go for it. So you'll stand at the front of your mat or at the front of, uh, well, some corridor so that you have some space behind you. It's fine to do these exercises without a mat, just your knees might be a bit sensitive, so you might feel some pressure on the knees. So you can have some, a towel so that the knees step onto a towel rather than on the ground. Other than that, in India, they didn't have any mats. This is just our Western comfort. So press down into the feet, push the feet down, suck lower belly in, ribs in, lift the chest up, arms by your sides. 
So inhale, press the feet down, inhale to the crown of the head. Exhale, keep the belly in, keep the belly engaged. So throughout the practice, you think of what we were doing with Agnisara, lifting up. Inhale, bring the arms up, open up the chest and back bend slightly. Stay here just for this first one because we talk about the posture. So press the feet down, reach up through the arms, keep the belly in, lengthen the lower back. You don't want to collapse into the lower back. Okay, with your exhale, fold forward. So fold over the legs. You can bend the knees, it will be the start of the morning, so it's easy, it's, it's normal to be a bit stiff. Then you inhale the right foot back, right knee down. You move the hips forward and you can keep the arms down or you can bring the arms up. Arms can be apart or palms together. You pick the chin up, you can gaze up. If it's too much for the neck, then relax the head. You want to again reach away and reach back. So finding length through the lower back and opening up the upper chest to activate your sympathetic nervous system. And then you exhale and you bring your hands to the ground, knees back, and you bring knees, chest and chin to the ground, keeping the elbows in, keeping the belly in. Inhale, you slide forward into a cobra, press the feet down, keep the elbows in, reach the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, the shoulder blades in and the chin up. So find length again, long lower back. So press the feet down, press the pubis down, lengthen the lower back by sucking in the belly, by picking up the back ribs. And then exhale, press the feet down, come to a downward facing dog. Press into the arms, widen the shoulder blades, send the heels back, keep the belly. Inhale the right foot forward, left knee down, keep the belly in. Bring the arms up, open up, and then exhale, come to the front of the mat. You can always bend the knees and fold forward. If you can straighten the legs, you want the weight to come forward so that you feel the back of the legs stretching. But what's important is to uncurl the tailbone so that your lo the lower belly is in and you reach towards the feet with your whole body. Again, big here is fine. It's fine to bend the knees and stay low. It's fine to have the hands on the legs. This is just for the body to find some movement in the morning. So press the feet up, down, reach up, find a back bend, and exhale the arms by your side. Okay, we'll do the other side quickly. So press the feet down, inhale, pick up the chest, arch the back, keep pressing feet down, exhale, fold over the legs. Press the balls of the feet down, so bring all the weight forward. Inhale the left foot back, left knee down, hips forward, so feel the stretch at the hip flexor, open up the chest, and then exhale, hands to the ground, knees and chest and chin to the ground. Keep the elbows in, the shoulder blades back, inhale, slide forward, press the hands down, press the tops of the feet down, arch the back, and exhale, press into the hands, uncurl, and come back. Inhale the left foot forward, right knee down, hips forward, open up, keeping the belly in, extending, and exhale, hands forward and fold. Press the feet down, inhale, rise up, reach up, open up the chest, and exhale, arms by your sides or at heart center. So this will just take a minute for you, and it's a great way just to bring mobility to the body. These videos will be uploaded on YouTube, so you can go back and watch and learn this simple exercise. What's important is to keep the belly in and open up the chest, and then every time you flex, again, keep the belly in and pull the shoulder blades away from the neck so that the neck doesn't feel any strain. We're focusing on the spine. Yoga is said to be the practice of bringing light to the spine. The spine is where our nervous system is. So there's a lot to be said about chakras and basically being representation of our like nervous system qualities. So you want to keep yourself strong through the spine. The more flexible you are, are in the spine, the longer you live. That's just a fact. We just have a few minutes left. So another practice I want to talk about is um, box breathing. Let me just check that I haven't skipped anything. No, so box breathing. So a great exercise for you during the day. We'll try it now. 
just to bring some energy to the body. So you can, of course, if you feel like it gets too much, you can do your Kapalabhati. So exhaling, 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 forcefully, just like blowing a candle. If you feel like you need to calm down, you can do your belly breathing. But if you need to revitalize yourself and wake up, a great breathing exercise is box breathing. So you sit up tall on your chair, on the ground, or even standing up. You want to think of the pubis moving back, the chest being proud, the shoulders coming back, the shoulder blades coming down, and the back of the skull reaching up. You relax your face and you focus on your breath. Box breathing is simple. It's just like a box. You inhale for a count of seconds, then you hold the breath for the same count of seconds, then you exhale for the same count of seconds, and then you hold the breath out for the same count of seconds. So we'll try with the number four. So sitting up tall, exhale all the breath out through the nose, relax the face, and then inhale for four, three, two, and one. Hold the breath for four, three, two, and one. Exhale out four, three, two, and one. Hold the breath for three, two. Let's try with five. Inhale five, four, three, two, one. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Exhale five, four, three, two, one. Hold five, four, three, two. Last round. Inhale five, four, three, two, one. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Exhale five, four, three, two, one. Hold the breath out. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, relax. Inhale. And exhale. So this is box breathing. You just think of a box, you inhale for a count that works for you, maybe for six, maybe for seven. What's important is that you're not straining yourself. So a count that feels comfortable, but also that allows you to breathe in completely and to breathe out completely. You want to feel like you're filling up the lungs with air and then that you're emptying the lungs out completely. Okay. Question? Yes. Is this, uh, uh, like, where do you inhale? Is it uh, belly breathing as well, or is it like up chest? It's a full deep inhale, so you, you can, depending on what you do, if, if you want to basically have a more calm breath, you can just do belly breathing and to do it with the count. But if you want it to be uh, just an energizing breath, you think of a three-part breath. So inhaling from the root, to the belly, to the ribs, to the chest, to the lungs, holding the breath. And then as you exhale, you can think of the whole thing egg, 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 like deflating. And then hold the breath out. And then inhale. Hold. And then exhale. If you want it to be too energizing, then you can just breathe into the chest and then inhale. Hold. And exhale. And hold. So you'll be the alchemist of your own practice, depending on how you want to do it. The more um, calming breath is in the belly, then there's like the three part breath and then there's breathing just into the chest and the same when breathing out you can just breathe out from the belly you can breathe out from the chest or you can think of it like a three part like breathing out all the way down okay so pretty much this these were the things i wanted to talk about today so it's different rituals that you can use during the day. It, you will decide how to do your routine. My suggestion is that you do have a morning routine because it makes you feel good after waking up. You don't just run to go to work or right now just run to go to the computer and all the social media. You make sure that 
you hydrate yourself, you make sure that you cleanse yourself, and you make sure that you lubricate yourself. The, the exercise that we did at the beginning with lubricating the joints is a great exercise to do at any point where you feel a bit stuck, especially if you didn't get to do any physical exercise during the day, just do some movements. Next week, I want to talk a bit more about uh, night routines so I can give you something that you can do at night to calm down but you already know some exercises from today that just calm you down so just rock like rounding into a ball it will help you to round down belly breathing will help you to ground down and then you can go to sleep breathing into the belly relaxing the mind are there any questions or should we just do a small like Shavasana to end with? Okay, so come to your mat and lie down. You want to take a deep breath from your heels all the way to the crown of the head. And then open the mouth, stick the tongue out and make a hissing sound. Two more times, inhale from the heels all the way to the crown of the head and then stick the tongue out, breathe out. Last time, relax the face, relax the whole body and exhale out, stick the tongue out. Close your mouth. Bring your lips together, but relax your jaw, relax your face, relax the back of the head, relax your arms, relax your feet, and breathe into the belly. Feel the belly button rising up to the sky, and feel the belly button dropping back down. Relax the breath, but keep your awareness at the belly button. Watch it, how it naturally flows up with the inhale and how it naturally flows down with the exhale. For the next few moments, keep all of your awareness at the belly button. If anything takes you away from this moment, then come back to the belly button. Come back to that movement and that feeling of groundedness. Relax. very gently bring your observation your attention your awareness back to your body bring your awareness back to the space occupied by the body Bring your observation back to your belly button, how it moves with every breath. And with every breath, visualize life force energy, filling up the belly with air. As you exhale, that life force energy circulates around the body, goes to each finger, each toe, goes to the crown of the head. Inhale and start moving your fingers, start moving your toes, start moving your head from side to side. And then exhale, allow the wrists to move, the feet to move. Slowly but with control, inhale the arms overhead, stretch the whole body, reach away. And exhale, find more length through all four limbs. Reach away through fingertips, through feet. 
relax the body again bring the knees to the chest maybe one knee at a time maybe both hug your knees rub yourself in and then rock from side to side massage your back Come down to the right side, the side of the sun, the side of expansion, the side of new beginnings, and use your hands to press and come to a seat, a comfortable seat. You don't need to open your eyes. Keep your eyebrows relaxed, the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. Take a moment in stillness, just observing what's happening. Observing your body, your mind, your feelings. And then bring your hands to your chest, heart center. Inhale from the root all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale through the nose, allow the practice to find its place in your body. Inhale, reach up through the back of the crown, find length, find integrity. And exhale, allow the head to bow down, but holding the integrity of the back of the body. Thank you for listening to me, thank you for trying things out thank you for caring for your well-being it means a lot these days we need to take care of ourselves and my teacher says do your practice you have no idea how you're helping the world by just doing your practice so keep taking care of yourself take care of your health take care of your well-being so you can support everyone especially at times like the ones we're living the light, the strength, the courage inside me honors and celebrates the light, the strength, the courage that's inside you. Namaste. Thank you for your practice. Again, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, let me know. And um, we'll have a beginner's yoga practice tomorrow. It doesn't mean that if you experience with yoga, you cannot do it. It just means that we're going back to the basics. So hopefully there's something for everyone to learn tomorrow at one o'clock. And then, uh, well, the schedule is on my um, website and I sent it to you. So feel free to ask me if you don't have the schedule. We're doing some classes every day and it's, it's fun. We should stay connected and keep practicing. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Alex. So Thank much. you, Alex.